Good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord God Almighty for another blessed Tuesday allowed us to be together one more time to share his word. I pray you are encouraged on the day and being enriched in your spirit that you're standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. You know, as we approach the evening, today God has really been ministering to my heart all day and sharing his word with other people today as well to help them get through different challenges in their life. And I pray that you are encouraged on the day to keep standing on the word of God yourself. As we're going through a time of consecration this week for one of my brothers in our church who's going through a challenge facing cancer, Brother Davis, we just speak healing for him and over him that the Lord will continue to manifest his power in his life. He needs our prayers. He needs us to continue to encourage him, keep him lifted up in the faith of Jesus Christ. It's challenging what he's going through. It's devastating. But God is still in control. He's the healer. He's the redeemer. He's the sanctifier. God has the power to heal and deliver from all sickness and disease as we trust in his word. Amen. So tonight we're going to get into our lesson in a few minutes. But I heard the Lord say in his word, stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. So many times we're faced with challenges in our lives and we lose our faith. We lose our grip. Sometimes we feel like fainting in adversity and giving up. But yet the word of the Lord comes to remind us that great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And when you realize that I am the Lord, thank God, that heal is thee, healing is the children's bread. It's yours. It's yours. You can have it. You have to de desire healing, desire to move by the Spirit of God into his truth and his righteousness. doesn't matter how challenging things become. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and stand firm-footed and rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus not to be moved, you will see the victory. You will see the victory. Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight, whatever you're going through in this moment of your life, in this season, be not dismayed for God is not tired. He's not given up. He hasn't turned his back on you. He's right there with you to carry you through your situation, through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a verse of a song in my spirit. It's uh, by Eddie James. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. It's been in my spirit all, all day long. Lord, make me a house of prayer. Because when you become that tabernacle, that, that sanctuary where God's presence dwells, you will begin to sense God's presence moving on the inside of you like never before. Amen. And I pray that you be encouraged tonight with this word, this song. And let the fire of the altar never burn out of your heart. Because we have an all-consuming fire that lives inside of us who is God himself through Jesus Christ our Lord. And through the power of the Holy Spirit. It says, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house make me a house of prayer a house of prayer Lord make me a house make me a house of prayer a house of prayer 
May the fire on my altar never burn up. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. And that should be the desire of all of our hearts. That the Lord make us an altar, a house, a tabernacle for God's presence to dwell. Fill with his presence, a house of prayer. And when you become that house of prayer, the enemy has no power over you than what you give him. We are the ones are in control. We have been given the authority. But nevertheless, we neglect our authority because we listen to the enemy's voice that becomes intimidating sometimes. Last week, we left off talking about how God protects the righteous seed. How God protects the righteous seed. And how Athaliah, she had another son who was hidden away from her when she thought she was killing her bloodline to pre prevent anyone else from taking the throne of Judah. Yet God had a remnant in the bush that was set aside for such a time as this to cause her son to take his rightful place as an heir to the throne. We all have been given the rightful place of authority in our lives. We're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we have the right to be in a place of authority. We have the right to sit on the throne and allow Jesus Christ to rule, reign, have dominion in our lives. Amen. Good evening, son. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> no, I didn't come up with this song. It was a song by Eddie James. A song by Eddie James it's called House of Prayer. So get a chance. Check it out. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube Music. Also on Amazon Music. And I think it's on Apple Music too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it though, but I think it is. Amen. Amen. So we were talking about last week the importance of protecting your generational bloodline. I was looking up something, and I'm if I had my other phone, I can pull it up, but I can't pull it right now. It was the five I wills. Matter of fact, let me go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 in my scripture. I'm going to go there right quick. Because this is really good. Because the enemy, he has a lot of willings to take control of your life in the life of anyone else. But it's up to you and I to really make a decision within ourselves. Look at Isaiah chapter 14, beginning at verse 13. Matter of fact, start at 12. Start at verse 12. And let me go over here. Give me one second here. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. And it says like this. Let's see here. God. Everything want to go fast on me. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? This is the devil. How art thou cut down to the ground? Who didst weaken the nations? So Satan was cut down from heaven, from his place of worship and praise. And yet it says he weakened the nations. Isn't that something how this spirit influenced a whole nation to become weak? Then he says, verse 13, is Isaiah prophesying. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's number two. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 
So he has a region, he has a colony, he has a location. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Number four. I will be like the most high God. Isn't that something? The enemy has five I wills that still influences people today through the power of the spirit of Jezebel. And it's still ringing out in the hearts of people in the church today. We have to understand that every time God brings a revelation to the body of Christ and he prophesies, he speaks a word of judgment and condemnation to the heart of people to be convicted, to change. He's talking about the ones whom he called for himself as a chosen generation. Too many people in the body of Christ today do not know their rightful place Therefore, they find themselves being victimized by the I wills. How many times have you said to yourself, I will fix this. I will go over here. I will travel to this destination. I will go find a way to bring money to my hands. I will do this. I will do that, right? Because that's the human nature. The selfishness of human nature is always decree and declare, I will without the absence of God. If God is not in the equation, I heard this from many different theologians and preachers throughout the years. If God is not in the in the in the uh, the list of your agenda, He's not in your plan. He's not the orchestrator of your life. Your plan gonna fall to naught, to nothing. If God is not in the equation, it's never gonna balance out the way God wants to be in your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the thoughts and plans I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, thoughts of peace, and not to do you harm, and give you an expected end. In other words, your ladder becomes greater than your beginning when God has the plan in motion in your life. Don't that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. When God has put the equation together to balance out, become equal, it all equals up to the cross. Everything that God has added and subtracted in your life balances out and equal to the cross of Jesus Christ. And it brings you back to the revelation of who God is to you in your heart. If God is in your heart reigning as the king of glory, it doesn't matter what these I wills declare and decree it will never have any effect in your life ain't that good that, that's really good i find that revelation there that's a revelation so tonight we're going to talk about athelias attack upon david's generation last week we were talking about judah the lineage of Judah, how Joseph, not Joseph, Israel, how Israel called all his, his sons together, 12 tribes of Israel. He was at the end of his life, getting ready to die, and God told him to speak a word of prophecy to all of his children. He began to bless all his children, and he began to bless them with what God says is going to call them to be successful, some are going to be warriors, all these different things God promises his children, and, and God says this is what's going to happen. So, Genesis 39. Let's go to Genesis 39. And it says, trying to find the right. I'm going to make sure I got the right scripture. Give me one second. I'm going to lift this up because I got to have the right scripture. The right passage scripture. I don't want to lead, mislead anybody. My God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 49 chapter. I'm all close. I thought it was 39, but it's 49. Go to Genesis chapter 49. 
Thank God for the internet. We can always find something right away when you're looking for it. That's why people don't have an excuse for not studying their Bible. If they say they don't know how to read the Bible, they got commentaries, they got concordances that define and break down the scriptures for your learning. They help you get an understanding of what God is talking about to you. Okay? So, let's go to Genesis 49. It says, And Jacob, verse 1, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourself together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, so it's Jacob, not Israel, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben art thou my first art thou my firstborn, might, my might, the beginning of my strength, excellently in dignity, and excellently in power. Number four, verse four, unstable as waters, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed and defiled it, and he went up to my couch. Verse 5, Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty, are in their habitation. Verse 6, O my soul, come not, unto, un, n come not thou into their secret, unto as their assembly, mine honor, be not mine united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dug down a wall. Verse 7, Cursed be their anger. For it was fierce, their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Verse 8, Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be upon the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Verse 9, Judah is a lion's wealth, from whom pray, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couches as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet unto Shiloh, till Shiloh come, and to him shall the gathering of people be. Talking about the Messiah coming through the same lineage. Verse 11 Binding his foe unto the vine, and his ass's coat unto the choice vine, he washed his garment in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall, it says, eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth whited with milk. Verse 13, Lebanon shall dwell at the havens of the sea. He shall for a haven of ships, and his borders shall be unto Sidon. Verse 14, Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. He saw the rest was good, and the land was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear and become a servant to tribute. Then he said, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that bites his horse's heel so that the rider should fall backwards. So that I waited for the Lord, thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome in, at the last. So he's talking to all of his sons. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. He shall and he shall yield a royal dainties. Naphtali is, is a hind that, that loose. He giveth goodly word. Joseph is a fruitful bow, bow or bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. In verse 23, the archers have sore, sorely grieved him and, shall, and shot at him and hated him. But his bow, his bow, abode his, abode his strength, and his arms and his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From hence, from this is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even the God of, of, of thy fathers, who shall help thee, and by the my Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under, and blessings of the breast and of the womb, blessings of thy fathers, shall be upon the head of Joseph and the crown of the head of him that, that was separated from his brother. Benjamin shall raven, be as raven wolves. In the morning he shall devour prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. 
All of these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is that their father spoke unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessings be helped them. And he charged them and said to them, I am to be gathered unto my people. This time when you die. He said, Burn me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron and of the Hittites, and in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, for, for possession as a burying place. 30, 31. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife, and there buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife, and there buried Leah. The purchase of the field and the cave that is therein from the children of Heth. When Jacob made an end of the commanding of the sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Isn't that something? How everything that he spoke concerning his, his children was a word of prophecy for their future. Of how he saw them, what God had revealed to him. This is Jacob. Remember, God told uh, uh, Jacob, his name would be called Israel because he was a trickster, right? But then it said, Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourself together. So all of his sons, he still spoke a word what God had given him to speak over each one of them. So tonight we're going to get into our lesson. Glory to God. I pray this bless you tonight, young man. Because the bloodline becomes a serious offense in the eyes of God. We have to be careful how we raise our children, how we lead in our families. Because if God is not in your family, then I, I come to a revelation that you're just existing. On my radio show, we talked about last year sometime about spiritual zombies. And I got in this conversation a couple of days ago with a brother and and one thing that God revealed to me is that Jesus says, he that has the Son of God has life. But he that has not the Son of God, it says, has not life. And that's what God is speaking tonight. We have the life in us when we put Jesus Christ first in our lives. If he's not first in your life, then the enemy will take precedence in leadership in your home. We have to be careful not to allow the enemy to control our, our lives, our destiny, our children's destiny. We cannot allow the enemy to manipulate us in any kind of way to keep us from walking in the divine order God has implemented in our lives. There's an order that God lives for. And it all starts with the beginning, the head. Him being the head in your life. Once God is the head of your life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, then the wife comes under the father of the husband, who will be father of her children. And the problem comes in when the head doesn't know the relationship with God. So how can you lead a family in the way God wants you to go if you're not being disciplined by the Holy Spirit? I would never expect a woman to follow a husband who does not know his rightful place in God. Because he's leading them all to damnation. The word says that. The Bible says that a husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. So Christ loved the church, the body of Christ. We're the church. He loves us dearly. And he's looking for us to have the same response to reciprocate the love to our spouses in our lives. And when we get the order corrected, get the wife in order, the children get in order. Because if you're preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God, whatever you're doing in your house, putting God's word in the atmosphere, then your children have been taught the word of God. One thing God told, told Moses, we led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He told them to tell them to keep the word of God on their forehead. 
They even had to keep it in the back of their palms. So everywhere they went, they were reminded of the word of God. Even when they came to the Jordan River, before they crossed on to Canaan, God told Moses, no, in my fact, because Moses had died, and Joseph picked up the mantle to lead the children forward to the promised land. And God told, not Joseph, uh, Joshua. So Joshua, God said, gather 12 stones and place the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan River as you're crossing over. He said, this would be a memorial. So when your children go, grows up and ask you what is the meaning of these stones, you can tell them the story how you were bound in Egypt and God brought you out and drowned your enemies in the Red Sea. We have a memorial that we must always be reminded of of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ conquering our enemy on the cross. And knowing that when he died, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. You hear that? A borrowed tomb. He didn't have residence. He stayed there. It was a temporary dwelling place after death. And on the third day, the word says, he got up with all power and authority in his hands because he knew he had just defeated death. He just defeated the grave. And he took the keys of the kingdom from the enemy. And he gave the keys to his people, the children of God, that we would have the access, oh my God, to every precious promises that God has written in his word for us today for our learning. That we can walk by faith and not by sight into the promises of God's word. Glory to God. I tell you, when you really get a revelation, I'm just so full today with the word of God. I'm so full. God just been ministering to me all day. Have an evening thing, but one banana a day, and still not hungry because I've been feeding on that word all day. And sometimes God does that when you're going through consecration. Sometimes God will take away your appetite and give you an appetite just for the word of God. As I mentioned in the beginning, quite a few of us come together on the leadership of Pastor Terry Edwards to instruct us to come together and fast for one of our brothers in our church, uh, his name Deacon Willie Davis, who defeated cancer and cancer came back. And so we have to pray for God's will to be done, that God will heal and deliver it and cut the cycle of cancer out of his life. See, one thing we have to learn how we need to pray for the root of the thing to be revealed. Not the surface. Once the seed has been planted, doesn't matter what that seed, I talked about this last week. Whatever seed has been planted in your life is going to bear some type of fruit in your life that will either have control over your life or destroy your life. The Word tells us the thief come not only but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come to give you life and that life more abundantly. You can have life tonight. You got to choose it. You got to make a decision in yourself that you're going to receive life by the Spirit living God. God bless you, Pastor Denise. So tonight we're going to talk about after Leah's attack upon David's generation. We were talking about generations last night being impacted by the enemy. And one thing about God, he's not going to let you be deceived by the enemy. You need to pay attention. So many times God gives us warning signs when some things about to affect your body, some things about to affect your mentality, some attack about to come against you in your bloodline, God will reveal to you something either through a dream or a prophetic word. 
or someone comes along and begin to speak a word to you, what God told them to tell you, and it has something to do with what's about to take place in your life. Many times, and I say this all the time, when God has someone speak a prophetic word, a prophecy to you, it connects to something God already has spoken to you. We hear God speak to us, but we don't listen to God's voice. There's a difference. I can hear you talking to me. Don't mean I'm listening. I mean, right in your face, you're talking to me. I'm hearing you. But I'm so distracted by everything around me or something that's going on in my life. Well, I'm not listening. But I hear you. We do God the same way. I hear God speaking, but I'm not listening. Because there's so much distractions in my life. I spent the whole day today working on my computer, listening to nothing but word all day, feeding my spirit, reading words today, meditating on the word today. Because so many times we have to feed our spirits with the word of God. The television shouldn't be it. The radio shouldn't be it. Socialization shouldn't be it. Sometimes you need to get in a solitary place all by yourself where you have no distractions. Shut out the noise. If you cut out the noise sometime when God is speaking to you, you are hearing God moving. You'll see God moving. You'll hear God speaking to you. Because he's trying to get your attention to make you aware of the attacks of the enemy. Now let's look. Let's take a look at Athaliah's plan. Assignment against David's generation. All parents love their children. When our children do wrong, we suffer heartache. David was no difference. Isn't that true? Isn't it, isn't it the truth that when your children defy what you told them not to do and something happened to them bad? You warned them. They didn't heed to the warning. And all of a sudden, you're hurt because they disobeyed you and they got themselves in trouble. Some children found themselves being killed. Some kids found themselves being, being sold in sex trafficking. Some kids found themselves in gangs and violence. Some kids found themselves in jail. Locked up for life. Some for years. All because they did not heed the warnings. When God warns us, is He's trying to protect you and your future generation from being impacted by the same mistakes that you made. And it does hurt your heart when your children defy your order, your 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 discipline, the things you told them to prevent them from getting certain situations, and they ignored it. They became callous in their heart and stubborn and rebellious and prideful. Six sons were born to David while he was in Hebron. In birth order, they are Amnon, Chiliad, Absalom, Adonijah, Shephatiah, and Ithrim. You find this in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. Hebron represents a place of covenant. Hebron represents a place of covenant. What is your place of covenant today? Where is it God has placed a designated place for you to be in your life that's a covenant to Him? We got to get to a place where we hear God's voice speaking. It was where Abraham built an altar as he signed his covenant with God and God's covenant with him and his generation. Remember when, when Moses went to the mountaintop to get the Ten Commandments? That's a place that was designated by God for him to meet with God. Abraham met with God in Hebron. And God made a covenant with him that he would be the father of many nations. And told him, by your 
seed shall all the kingdoms of the world be blessed, which is your descendants. Look at the Hebron prophetically. This was a place where God established a covenant with David by blessing him with a generational seed. A generational seed. Ain't that something? Because the Lion of Judah, the tribe of Judah, was that generation that God said going to come bring forth they, the beginning, the divinical lineage would bring forth the seed of the Messiah. So God established the coming with David by blessing with the generation of seed that he had the prophetic destiny to rule and reign Forever over who? Judah. But the devil had a different plan. You know the devil got a different plan for you today? He knows what you're going through. He's looking to stop you in your track. He's looking to stop your children being successful in life. He wants your children to be impacted by your past mistakes. That they fall in the same mindset and category of sin that leads them to a path of destruction. All because of the generations. That's why God said when the children of Israel were so rebellious, he, said he visited the, the father's sin upon the children and, and the third and fourth generation and generation after them. Because the same mistakes the fathers made, God said the same sin will impact their generation. That's what he's talking about. The third and fourth generation and any generation after them will be impacted by the same sin. But in order to break this cycle, glory to God, hallelujah, we got to allow the blood of the Lamb to purge our blood system, purge our generation, purge our hearts to get us in right, realign, realign with the Holy Spirit, to walk in our promise, that our children see for example of the life we're living before them. You got parents who drink with their children. You got parents who do drugs with their children. You got parents who fornicate with their children, who, who molest their children. All kind of stuff happens in this world are things that came from generations before. We all are guilty of something we've done wrong. Being an adultery, being a fornicate, being a liar, being a thief. We all have something in our lives we're not proud of. You cannot say you don't because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I got a messy past. And if God was to have judged me based on my past life, I would have been dead today. Only because of grace. Because the grace of God that appeared unto all men teaches us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust and live godly and soul for God and man. Another one had a sound mind, a wholesome mind, led by the Holy Spirit. Amnon, if you know the story of David, Amnon wanted his, his children raped his half sister Tamar. And then later, his, later on, he murdered his brother Absalom. Amnon means, his name means faithful, derived from the root word that means to support. My God. Confirm and nourish to be pillars established and everlasting implying to lasting covenant. The Lord gave David's son a son who established his covenant, yet Amnon chose to be the opposite of covenant. We all have a child in our lives, or we know someone that had a child in our lives, that no matter what you did to teach them the right thing to do in life, they still chose to oppose God and to follow in their own way of doing things in life outside of the covenant of God. Instead, he was an ancestress rapist, a covenant breaker, unsupportive of his father. 
just rebellious, stubborn, callous, prideful, arrogant, because his heart was haughty, did not and, and would not yield to authority. Instead of being a pillar in the house of God, Amnon rebelled against God's laws. We all were lawbreakers at one point in our life. Would God have to get our attention the best way he could to draw us back to himself? But many times we chose to be rebellious. We chose to be stubborn and prideful. And God is saying tonight, what is it in your heart that keeps on causing you at a certain time of the year to become a covenant breaker? You know, we all have a habit, a stronghold, or something that God been pricking at your heart about. It might be drinking. It might be smoking blunts and marijuana, crack, cocaine. It doesn't matter what that sin is, fornicator, adulterer, a liar, manipulator, a controller, abuser. It doesn't matter what it is. God is pricking at your heart to get rid of it. To allow the Holy Spirit to purge you from all of your iniquity and give you a new heart after his spirit. But so many times we hear God speaking and we turn a deaf ear. Amnon was one of those. No matter what, he fell under the same spirit of Athaliah. Well, just like her mother, a covenant breaker, an idolater, a liar, a manipulator, a controller. How heartbreaking for David. His generations were being destroyed. Athaliah was on the prowl. You hear that? The same spirit was still searching and seeking through the bloodline for another person to impact to be a covenant breaker. Chiliab, David's second son, does not seem to have given many given David many problems, at least none that are documented. Maybe the devil skipped over one son to hurl his most fearsome blow against Absalom. For it was he who seemed to have called David the most grief. There's a child in your life, out of all children you know, it's the one that can get to your heart than anyone else can. They know exactly what's going to hurt you, they know exactly what's going to irritate you, they know exactly what's going to cause you to become discombobulated, confused. They know exactly what to do to make you discontent. Absalom was David's favorite son. In Hebrew, his name means Abba, Shalom. Means my father is peace. It derives from another Hebrew word means prosperity, health, Completeness, safety, soundness, and contentment. Shalom. That's all part of Shalom. Absalom was to be the fulfillment of God's covenant with David. His name represents Prince, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, who came to give us eternal peace. It was the fulfillment of our covenant with God. Absalom. But look at the twist here. There's always a twist when it comes to the enemy. Remember last week we talked about how the enemy always comes to the place where he wants to say, I will do this, I will do that. So you got Abba, which is father. You got Shalom, which means peace. 
So last week, when we talked about David and Goliath, Goliath was taunting David to a place to tell him that I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to feed your, your carcass to the, to the wild beasts, to the birds of the air. I'm going to do this. He said, you too pretty to be a man of war. You don't know how to fight. I mean, just to intimidate. Every day in your life, the enemy sends somebody to you to be a thorn in your flesh. And that thorn, like Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, is because of the great surpassing knowledge that I received of the Lord that was given to me a messenger of Satan to busset me. That means to beat me, to bring me to subjection. So because of this, that I will not be exhausted and puffed up in knowledge, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. I besought the Lord thrice that he would remove this thorn out of my flesh. And God spoke to him and said, My grace is sufficient. He said, Then I rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. When you get an understanding, the reason why some attacks come into your life, some attacks is not the devil. We want quick to, we want to be quick to blame the devil for everything that happened to us. But God says some of the attacks I allow into your life because you got distracted. And I had to allow certain things to happen to you to turn your focus back to me. But we miss it because we're focused on the attack and not on God. And God says some marriages fell in our lives because we both became divided in our focus. You have your own agenda, she has all her own agenda. We can't come together with a lot of the same old issues, the same old plan of the devil to attack us in our marriage and cause us to be defeated. And God said, if you had to turn to me and search me with all your heart, I will be found of you and you found of me. But we allowed ourselves to lose focus, to be intimidated by the words they say to us, one another, beating one another with the words and allow yourself to become victimized as a prey for the devil and the devil he baited you he enticed you he lured you into a trap to defeat you Absalom was demonically influenced to choose another destiny. He murdered David's firstborn son, Amnon, betrayed David, raised his own army to defeat and destroy his father, and then tried to take the throne. Who does that sound like? We've been talking about this for the last several weeks. Athaliah, Jezebel. The same spirit is in operation in David's bloodline to impact the bloodline to cut it off to seize the throne of power Absalom chose murder betrayal anger rebellion as his destiny and his choice ultimately led to his death so if you're just like that spirit you have murder in your heart by your words. Betrayal cannot be trusted. Anger, resentment, bitterness, rage, unforgiveness, hatred towards other people, rebellious, stubborn, callous of heart, refuse to repent. God said he gave Jezebel many chances to repent, but she refused to repent. As your destiny, it leads you to death. 
in Absalom, we can identify the evil forces of Athalia at work. Fully at work. For he plotted murder to illegally gain the throne of Judah. Athalia did the same thing. She killed her grandchildren. Her son was killed. And she illegally seized the throne. So in David's bloodline, his own son turned against him, plotted for his demise, which ultimately brought him death, killed his own self. And his father still lived. Athaliah's plan did not stop with Absalom. Athaliah's plan did not stop Absalom. After Absalom's death, his, his younger brother, Adonijah, David's fourth son, later revealed Solomon for the throne. God knew what he was doing. It was all in the plan. God knew that David was a murderer. Remember, it was adultery. So his bloodline followed the same sin of the father. But God had to cut off the bloodline by bringing forth another generation through his other son, the fourth son, Adonijah. Later, rebel Solomon for the throne. In other words, he was the one that God used to bring forth the bloodline to bring forth his, the son Solomon to sit as the next king on the throne. We're going to pick up next week after Leah strives on stealing the destinies of our children. She strives. She plotted. She plans on stealing the destinies of our children. You don't believe it? Look at the news. Every single day, throughout the day, you hear nothing but reckless car driving and took people's lives because someone stole a car, trying to outrun the police, end up in a tragedy. Sometimes they end up living, everybody else dies. You hear of kid, the Kia boys and stole a car, about five of them in the car, people hanging out the windows, flying down the streets, call the accident. One fly out the window and get killed. Others still live. Some run away, some get caught. Look in the news, you hear about other people. Stole a car. Caused a wreck. Multiple car wrecks. Many people lose their lives. All because the enemy is operating in the same spirit to steal the destiny of our children. The future generation are the ones who will come after us to point the generation to Christ. But the enemy is causing a lot of our children to die prematurely. And God is saying today, wake up church, pay attention, pray over your children, Pray over your bloodline. Pray over the next generation. That you can cut the enemy off at his pathway. We have no influence or impact on your children. I pray for my grandson. I pray for my son. I pray for his family all the time. Because the devil is a lie. The devil cannot kill our bloodline. God is raising up a generation. Who would not bow down to the influences. The enticement of the enemy. To kill the bloodline and the future generations. There's a wicked bloodline that has to be cut off. And God will begin to reveal to you who in your bloodline was the one to cause the generation after them to lead them into rebellion, lead them to idolatry, lead them from, from resisting God, opposing God. But tonight, God is saying, as a people, there's a seed sown in your heart of righteousness. And that seed is of the Holy Ghost. 
and God is trying to raise you up as a vessel of honor and not dishonor to bring him glory in your children's life, in your marriages, in your community, that our nation will return to God. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal the land. We look in the news, we can see the wildfires all, all in different countries, different states now. And we pray for those families that have been impacted by the wildfires and lost their lives. This has been over 7,000 uh, uh, lands have been burned up. We need to pray for our nation who's impacted by violence over in Russia and Ukraine and, and, Ukraine and Israel and Hamas and Zemin, all these different places, Yemen. These places are being impacted by demonic forces that's trying to cut off the bloodline and stop the future generation from rising up and following the Lord. So, Lord God, tonight I thank you for this lesson tonight, oh God. I pray that it impacts our hearts, change lives, oh God. Make us better, God, stewards of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we learn to hear and heed to your voice. No longer follow the lies of the devil, God. But we hear your voice speaking and be convicted and converted to turn our lives to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we do each week, if you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I invite you to pray this simple prayer with me tonight. For the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. I invite you to know this Jesus who we're talking about, who we're teaching about, who has the power to save souls and prevent you from dying and going to hell, but that you can live your life in heaven, reigning with Jesus Christ forever and eternity. By praying this simple prayer, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Help me to live my life as a pleasing sacrifice for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you because you made a decision. Turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Denise. God bless you. I received that. Yeah, we got to wake up, church. We got to pay attention because the enemy's not playing fair with us. He's, he's being manipulative and controlling and deceptive. And we have to pray for our children. We cover them every day. Cover your aunties, your uncles, your cousins, your your in-laws, your friends, your social your enemies, your pastors, your leaders, the apostles, the bishops, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists. We got to cover them in our prayers because the whole body of Christ is under attack. God has spoken to me that this is a season of manifestation and God is revealing to us the plan of the enemy in the heart of God that we know how to hear his voice and obey his voice and follow him and not follow the lies of the enemy we got to pray that even we teach our children the word of God there are children in jail that should not be in jail but because they have a negative influence from other peers which enticed them to turn away from the Lord they found themselves entrapped in the bait of Satan. And we need to pray that God open their eyes, give them the willpower to say no to the devil, no matter where he comes from, that the Spirit of God would draw them to him to repentance. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Anyone got a question before we go tonight? Anyone got a question? Well, I invite you, if you have a question, you want to call me later on, you can call me at 
414-299-6463. That's my ministry number, 414-299-6463. And I pray that you continue to be enriched in your spirit. Continue that the Lord Jesus Christ minister to your heart. Don't get don't have this book. Get this book. Get this book. I tell you, this book is enriching. Very enriching. Allow this book to minister to your heart. Because I guarantee you, when you get that book in your spirit, it's going to transform your thinking. Become more and more like Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. So, gracious Father, I thank you tonight for another opportunity to break this bread of life. I pray something that has been said, O oh God, will entice us to follow you, will draw us into following you, convict us to follow you, to change our destiny from a hell-bound destiny to an eternal life glorified destiny in you. And I ask, O oh God, you change our thoughts. Even break habits and strongholds. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us, God. And be willing to repent. And let go of the issues that we're, we've been guarding. Those things in our lives we've been protecting. That's not of you, God. Allow you to break down the wall of the enemy in our hearts, oh God. That you can erect us in your spirit. That your word become a strong tower. That we can run into it and find safety in your presence. Now, thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I pray you continue to be enriched in your spirit. Continue to love on the Lord God. Turn your life over to the Lord. And return to his word. Get the word of God in your spirit. Study the word of God. And let the word manifest in your life. Read Genesis chapter 49. You'll find out the promise that God had Jacob speak of his children, who was called Israel. And every word he spoke is a word that impacts our nation today because God had to allow him to speak how they were going to turn out in their future, in their lives, because some were going to turn from God. And that's what he's talking about. But yet there's going to be some who are going to be faithful to the Lord. And we know today we got children in our family, got relatives in our family who are faithful to the Lord, and we got some that are rebellious to the Lord. But we need to just pray, pray, pray for them. And have faith in God that God will change their hearts and change their lives. And watch God change things. Amen. Well, you all have a great night. The Lord says the same. We'll resume again next week. To start all over again with our lesson and complete what we started. We got three more chapters left in this book. We're in chapter five right now. We're almost at the end of five. But we're going to continue to move forward. Also, share with someone you know. Our church is having a block party this coming Saturday, third, August third, from eleven to about three. Of the block party, back to school block party. You invited, invite someone else to come. We're gonna have school supplies. We're gonna have a raffle. We're gonna have pony rides. We're gonna have a, many different activities taking place at this block party. It's our tenth annual block party that we're doing. And the address is 3223 West Lloyd Street. 3223 West Lloyd Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Share with somebody else. Invite them to come out this coming Saturday for our 10th annual Redeemed Faith Fellowship Back to School Black Party. Amen. And I pray you be encouraged. And I thank you again for tuning in tonight and joining me tonight as we study the Word of God. And I pray that God continue to bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. That means the glory. Lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord continue to give you shalom, peace, as you abide and rest and settle in his presence. From 11 to 3, 11 to 3, it's the block party. 11 to 3. So you all be blessed. And we'll see you again this next week on the same channel. Same station as we break the bread of life on a Tuesday night Bible study. God bless you.